<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. You're in the house of the Lord, Dixon, Tennessee, and we're fixing to start. <laughs> let's all just, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for taking care of us last year. And Father, we're so grateful that we know that you're going to continue to take care of us in this new year. Father, I believe that you're showing us that you are going to manifest yourself in, on, and through us in a greater way in this new year. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord. We believe, Father, that you are bringing us to health, Lord God, yes. a health that we haven't known in some of us in decades and some of us have never known. And Lord God, we are just so grateful for all that yes. you're fixing to do. Yes. We pray that every word said and every song sung would be by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. To the upbuilding and edifying of your church, your body, Lord. Make us one, Father. Do in us, Lord God, what we cannot do in ourselves. With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible to him that believe. And we thank you, Father that you are bringing in, bringing us into yes. a place in you that yes. we've never known, and we're so grateful, sir. Amen. Hold it to he, she, or to have your way in this service, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's let's give the Lord a clap offering for uh, 2023. Yay! Amen. Welcome to the new year, and uh, looking forward to all that God has for us. And I know uh, 2023, uh, for me personally and for Bobby Jean personally, it's been a, a time where our physical bodies have gone through a lot of surgery and um, uh, testing, and um, that's okay. We're here, praise the Lord, and we're ready for anything that God has, praise the Lord. Um, you know, I was thinking um, that uh, 2023, had a lot of things you had to overcome in it. But you know what uh, the fire does? It reveals. Yeah. Burns off all the dross, burns off all the tin, all of those things that we don't need. And uh, what remains is what God uh, wants uh, to do through us. Uh, I mean, to uh, have uh, remaining in us. So um, uh, it's a revealing time. Oh, Lord, I hope 2023 doesn't work that. Yeah, I wanted that correct. <laughs> how, do you, uh, how, do you, how do you reach out here and disannul, uh, zip it off? <laughs> I meant 2022. Yeah, we kind of figured that. Yeah. And, uh, but 2023 is going to be what it, what it is. I mean... Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people are going to be prophesying into it and giving us all of the, um, what 23 might mean and all of that. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. We're going to go through it. We're going to either be blessed or tried. And uh, yeah, probably both. Amen. And uh, But the main thing is, is that it's the day of the Lord. Amen. And the day of the Lord is a day of light and glory. It can be a day of darkness also. Uh, uh, you know, people think that when you're coming into the kingdom message, you're going to have just sunshine all the time and wonderful times. But uh, we're growing. And uh, when trees grow, they grow usually in the winter time. Their roots grow uh, in the winter time. Uh, and uh, that's that's really where uh, I see us as, is that these uh, things that we have faced in 2022 uh, will um, uh, reap for us a great reward in 2023. Yes. Because I believe um, however you made it through, your attitude, your uh, stand in God, uh, that's what... Uh, uh, reveals more than anything else. And I'm going to sing a song that Charlotte wrote to bring in the new year. And uh, I believe there's a pearl 
uh, in the field. And uh, that uh, is what God is going to bring forth in 2023. Uh, pearls are, are, are uh, formed by a gristle that, that grinds and, and polishes and, uh, and makes up this beautiful pearl. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, the scripture talks about the pearl in the field. So we're going to sing it and bring in the new year with it. Praise the Lord, because I believe there's going to be a pearl in the year 2023. Amen. Mm. If you have a book, it's 152. Page 39. I found the pearl. Let me try and get it here. I found the pearl, so I bought the whole field of Not there yet where I can hit those notes. Us, I found the oh. pearl. I'm sorry. You're fine. So I bought the whole field. A royal diadem my eyes have seen. Yes, I do. With you for his will. You're a royal seed, and that for Christ I glee. I found the pearl. Yes, he has. So I bought the whole field. A royal diadem my eyes have seen. Oh, thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. And now. I stand with, with you for his will. will. Thank you, Jesus. You're a royal seed, and that for Christ I glean. We're gleaning your pearl today. Hallelujah. I found the pearl. Thank you, Lord. So I bought the whole field. A royal diadem my eyes have seen. you for his will. 
Thank you, Lord. We do stand. You're a royal seed and that for Christ I glean. Oh, you're a royal seed and that for Christ I Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We send your word into this new year, Lord. Yes, Lord. We send your word out into this year, hallelujah. Go before us, Lord. Heal us and restore us, almighty God. May your people rejoice in the day of the Lord, hallelujah. Raise up a new song in us today, a song of glory, of honor, of majesty, hallelujah. Make our heart to rejoice in the appearing of the Lord. You are in our midst, almighty God. You are in our midst with your mighty power and glory. May we be changed, O oh Lord, into that image and likeness that you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in the highest, O oh Lord. We glorify your name. It's an old song that, um, and again, I feel like this will be something I want to sing into 2023. It's a special thing to be shut in with God. I know nobody liked COVID, and it was horrible, and it killed people too. Yes. Um, but there's always something good in, in what happens. You see the silver lining of it. And uh, it was a time where we were shut in. Now, some people went stir-crazy. And um, they did everything but seek God. Uh, but there's a, a place where you can get shut in with God. You and him. Just you and him. And a lot of people don't want to do that because they don't want to hear what God wants to tell them. They're afraid God's going to ask them to do something, maybe. I don't know. But a lot of people do not like a one-on-one -on -one with God. They want to hear it from a man. Like uh, Israel wanted uh, Moses to go up into the mount and come back and tell them what God said. Because of the uh, the rumbling and the shaking and everything that was so overwhelming in the mountain. Uh, but that's what God is. God is an overwhelming, shaking presence. 
And when we come into his presence, many times it can be something that brings fear. If you ever get a hint of uh, what kind of a God we're dealing with here, yes. it can cause you to have a, a fear, fearful approach to him. Uh, and uh, eventually that turns into a reverential approach, one of reverence. And uh, But at the same time, you still have this uh, 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 fear of, of what a mighty power that is, this God that we serve, our Father. You know, some, some kids have the kind of father that you can just run across the room, jump up into his lap, and uh, pull on his hair. Uh, but there's another kind of father where it's... Uh, you approach him with respect, and um, you don't just go running and doing what a child would do. As you grow up, it's a more of a yes. mature yes. relationship. Yes. Uh, but shut in with God in a secret place, there in the spirit, beholding his face, gaining new power to run in this race. I love to be shut in with God. Amen. Amen. Can you see that over there? Well, we don't know it, but we're, we'll just do our best to follow you, sir. You'll get it. <laughs> shut in with God. In a secret place There in the Spirit Beholding His face Gaining new power To run in the race how I love to be shut in with God. <laughs> Don't you love it? Shut in with God in a secret place. There is the Spirit. Beholding his, his face. Oh, hallelujah. Gaining new power to the run in this race. How I love to be shut in with God. Sing it unto him. Shut in with God in a secret place. There is the Spirit beholding His face. Come on, just look at Him. Gaining new power. Race, how I love to be shut in with God. What a time it is! Oh, shut in with God in a secret place. There Spirit beholding his face. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Gaining new power to run in this race. How I love to be shut in with God. 
I under the key. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Horia Rabba Barando, Shake and Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Look for things in 2023 to be, um, what's the right word I'm looking for in my spirit? Um, for the noise to be um, brought down in your life, the noise, uh, those noises that aren't helping you out any, the noise of work, the noise of uh, uh, your bank account, the noise of uh, your bills, you know, all these noises that we go through in our life. And uh, at times they, they block out the voice of God in our life. And um, we're trying to handle all these irons in the fire and uh, look for 2023 to be a lower volume overall. Stillness in the Lord. Stillness in the Lord. Uh, God dwells in the quiet place. That's where he dwells at. He dwells in the stillness. We as humans, with our, the way we're wired, we want noise. We want volume. We want something that'll stir up the soulish man. And our uh, emotions and everything, but in 2023, um, God started dealing with me in 2022 about this, about being still before the Lord, and uh, that's why every once in a while in these services, uh, there won't be anybody doing anything. We'll just be in the stillness of the Lord meditating upon him, waiting for him to speak. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we're in no rush this morning, and we're not in a uh, going to be in a rush in 2023. <laughs> Glory to God. We're going to walk in God according to the rhythm that he sets forth. Amen. But I believe it's a time to be still, and to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I just feel like this is that special time. Number 149. Mm -hmm. Let, Let us worship, worship him, him in the beauty of him. Appearing and as he makes us one, so the world his son now may see. The trumpet sound. He's here. Oh, he's here. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us worship him in the beauty of his appearing. And as 
He makes us one so the world his son now may see. And give him glory in for the power of his resurrection. His love cast out all fear. Let the trumpet sound, he is here. make us one so the world his son now may see give him glory in the power of his resurrection his love Cast out all fear, oh let, let the, the trumpet sound, he's here. I can hear Charlie Ryan blowing his trumpet, hallelujah. Let us worship him in the beauty of his appearance. And as he makes us one, so the world his son now may see. Give him glory in the power. His love cast out all fear. Let the trumpet sound. He is here. His love cast out all fear. Let the trumpet sound. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Makanda Randa. Hallelujah. Another song we want to sing into 2023. Hallelujah. Is uh, Speak, that I may know thy will. Page seven, and um, we want to hear God as we have never heard Him before. Yes, yes. It's vital. Yes. It's vital that we wait upon the Lord to hear Him. I don't want to hear man. Man has nothing. The flesh has nothing to tell us in the day of the Lord. The only one that can, that I want to have speak is the Lord. Amen. And when he speaks, then we receive instruction and in life and we're changed by that. Hallelujah. And uh, Charlotte wrote this many years ago, but it still stands. 
Hallelujah. Speak that I may know that will pave the way that I may go. Perform <laughs> thy work in me that all may see. Glorify for oh, thy seed that all may know thy love divine. Father, speak that I may do thy will, not mine. speak that I may do thy will not mine come on let's speak it into 2023 amen hallelujah oh speak that I may know thy will pave the way that I may go Perform thy work in me that all may see thee. Then glorify thy seed that all may know thy love divine. Father, speak that I may do thy will, not mine. Oh, hallelujah, I will We send it forth, O oh Lord. We send it forth to your people, O oh God. Speak that we may know thy will. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs. Speak that I may know thy will. Pave the way. How many knows that God can pave the way for us? He goes before us and prepares the way. Uh, he doesn't just stay where we're at and uh, have things happen. He, the things that do happen only happen because God has allowed it. All other things, he removes it as he paves the way before us. Pave the way that I may go. Perform thy work in me. He is the one that declares it, and he is the one that performs it. Amen. Hallelujah. If we have received a word from the Lord, then we must know 
that it is God is, is the same one that is going to perform that word in your life. So don't struggle with it. Don't try to make it happen. Don't try to, in your own strength, bring about a, a greater glory. Uh, we'll just mess it up if we yes. do that. Yes. We need to allow God to do the work, uh, the, to, to be the one that does the performance of it. Hallelujah. But perform thy work in me that all may see thee, in, in me, that all may see you. And then glorify thy seed that all may know thy love divine, divine, that we may be partakers of the divine nature. Amen. And uh, it's the divinity of God that needs to be seen today. Yes. Not the uh, wishy-washiness of man, not, not the bold, arrogant, uh, uh, belligerent um, flesh. Uh, what we need is love divine, the divinity being shown within us. Hataramahaya. And, and, and I'm telling you, uh, stillness, quietness, confidence, not panicking, hallelujah, resting in the Lord, all of those things are going to be an earmark of 2023 for a people who are moving on. Hallelujah. For a people who are hearing the Lord and believing his performance in them, and they are going to walk in the divinity of his love. Hallelujah. Uh, so, so this is all, uh, for me, this is a prophecy into 2023. Yeah. And speak that I may do thy will, not mine. Yeah. Yeah. We must have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying yes. to the church. Yes. If we get into a rush, if we start wanting to speed things up, we're going to get into trouble. If we try to slow it down because maybe we don't feel like we're ready for it, we're going to get in trouble. Yes. We have to have a, a, a voice speaking in us that we can hear, that we might walk in it. As uh, the scripture says, behind, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Is the way. Walk ye in it. Amen. That's what we need to hear is that voice. And you don't have to be in 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 the uh in God, walking in God for 50 years in order to hear his voice. Uh even the the new ones can hear his voice. Yes. Uh number 5. I don't know all all of these songs that the spirit's bringing to me, it's witnessing in my spirit that on this, the first day of 2023, that we need to sing these songs out into the year. Yes. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of songs in this book that we could sing, but I'm really trying to be led of the Spirit yes, Lord. according to what we sing because it is prophetic. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, we want to Minister the word. Mm. I have to get, I'm sorry, I can't hear it. Number five. The earthen five. vessels. Mm. The earthen vessels crying above. Sons of God now cry over earth arise and go. See the host, all heaven is here. Oh, come ye earth and start your singing. Proclaim this day of the Lord. Oh, rivers 
flow throughout the desert, earth and vessels now glow. Come into Mount Zion. Jesus, the earth and vessels crying above. Sons of God now cry. Oh, earth, arise and go. See the host. All heaven is here. All heaven is here, saints. Hallelujah. Oh, come ye earth and start your singing. Proclaim this day of the Lord. Oh, rivers flow. Earth and vessels now glow. Come into oh, Mount Zion. Yes, oh. He's arisen in you and me. Oh, hallelujah. Come into, come on into Mount Zion. You shall surely come unto Zion, walk into it, 
live in it, dwell in it. It is the high place of the Lord where you have been born to come into. So know that the Lord is going before you today, slaying all of your enemies, clearing out all of the rocks and debris. I'm going to make a highway for you, says the Lord, and you will walk therein in righteousness and in peace. The Lord is filling your mouth with his word, and he will surely bring you unto this place as he has said unto you before in your days gone by that he has gone to prepare a place for you that where he is, there you may be also. And know that this is true and that this is a reality. It is not a fairy, a land. It is not a fantasy. It is reality. You are walking into another dimension, into another dimension that's between heaven and earth. It's between the flesh and the spirit. It's a place where uh, God has built a place for you so that out of that place you may become equipped. It is the very throne room of your God. Know that you are chosen and that you are not, are not going to be let uh, off the hook uh, for this day of the Lord. You're not going to be able to retire from it. You're not going to be able to go on a vacation from it. The Lord is going to stir you up. Hakaramahaya, a fire is going to be kindled in your heart as never before in this year. And you are going to uh, do exploits for your God and know that you are his own. You are not some uh, 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 orphaned in uh, stepchild. You are his own. Hakaramahaya, and, and, and he has birthed you by the, uh, the virtue that is within him. And you were born anointed and full of love and God is restoring you back to your former estate, former constitution, back into that place where you were with him in the beginning and you are going to know that God is in the midst of you doing this, that it's not the devil, it's God but first he must take off of you all of your grave clothes, off of those filthy rags of self-righteousness so that you become naked and he can clothe you with garments of light and with garments of praise and with garments of salvation, says the Lord. I will clothe you as priests and kings and yea, you will go forth and speak the word and it will be done. It will be done, says the Lord. Have no doubt. It will be done. I will watch over this word and I will perform it, says God. God. I am the one that stretches my hand out and none can turn it back and I have purposed a thing and none can disannul it says your God. I have formed you in the in, in, in the womb of this very day. I have formed you in it and you are born of love and you will live in love and love will be your shield and your buckler. Yea, faith will come forth out of this love Yea, purpose will come out of this love. Everything is going to be born out of my love, says the Lord. So get ready. I am getting ready to shake myself and raise up out of my holy habitation. Get ready and know that you must be ready because I will not uh, hinder my day if you're not ready to, to receive it and to perform it. So put oil in your lamps, trim your wick, and let the Lord appear unto thee in a new and a living way, says the Lord. Hey, Karama Mahaya. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. We won't go be able to go back into the house and get something. We're going to have to leave all our stuff and get to the top of the house, to the roof, and not uh, go back down into the house to get our stuff 
isn't that a, a, a strange word? But it's it's pr- appropriate because it that's all it is is stuff. <coughs> what are we hanging on to it for? <laughs> why why are you hanging on to your fear? Let it go. Get to the top of the house. Um, all that stuff needs to stay down there. And uh, God's delivering us from that. And I hope and pray that we can go ahead and uh, oh, just, I, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Say something. I'm just, I, it's all right. I didn't mean to butt in. It's all right. Um, what the Lord was speaking to me is to let go of all of, of our offenses, that things that have offended us. And I, I want it. This is mainly speaking to myself. There's some been some things that have happened that have uh, offended me because of some things that I did for uh, someone, not anybody here, but. Uh, it it wasn't received, but I did it. And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, well, did you do it as unto me? Did you do all that as unto me? I'm like, well, mm. yeah. Then why are you offended? Amen. And so I'm like, well, shut my mouth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And that's when we do things out of our, if, if it's just out of the flesh, it's not going to reap anything anyway. That's right. But if you are doing it as unto the Lord, there's no room for offense, whether they receive it or whether they reject it or they reject you go as go do everything that you do, everything that you do as unto the Lord. And there should be no offense. Amen. That's all I have to say. Amen. Beautiful. Be- well, hey, um, that's, that's a powerful thing yes. to um, be without offense. Oh, my gosh. And don't we need to be? Well, uh, I know y'all don't know the, I want to sing In This Place. We're going to have to make up a book here, folks. Hallelujah, Lord. I really want to send this forth. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. That's it, isn't it? Here is Spirit Moves. Is that it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're trying, Pops, already. Mm-hmm. Spirit wings flutter over it. Angel voices sing you are blessed. We Display 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let it be. Let it be. <laughs> Number 127. Take a stand if, if you, you can. can. I'm speaking this into you today. And hear, hear this whole corporate, corporate man. Oh, Our Father, Father does have a plan. <laughs> Through his trump now in the land it's onward higher we, we shall go. go hear the Lord today we, we cannot lag nor be too slow the marriage supper's near you know Uniting body, spirit, soul. So take a stand 
if you can. Come on, let's take a stand. And hear this whole corporate man. Our Father does have a plan. Through his trump now in the land, it's onward higher we shall go. We cannot lag nor be too slow. The marriage supper's near, you know. Uniting body, spirit, soul. Come on, sing it with me. Sing it. Take a stand if you can. I'm going to take a stand. And hear this whole corporate man. Our Father does have a plan. now in the land it's onward higher we shall go yes we will we cannot lag nor be too slow our fiery suffers near you know Uniting body, spirit, soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Boy, I felt those songs going forth today. It makes such a difference. You know, um, Charlotte was a perfectionist like when you come to music, and I'm nothing but a pro, everything but a perfectionist. And she used to uh, really try to get me to... Uh, practice and get the songs down uh, with harmony and everything. Now, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but Bobby Jean and Pauletta and myself, we don't practice. Uh, <laughs> if you hadn't caught on to that yet. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Bobby Jean. But, um, and in our in gatherings, the musicians yeah. don't practice. They just show up with their guitar or whatever. And the spirit just takes it all over. So, um, that's the thing that blesses me so much when I know what God that, that God is doing what he's doing, um, that we can wait on the Lord together, that we know when to come back in together. Uh, you know what, um, Sarah, I know Zach's going to be grumbling if you'll get that camera centered. Zach's kind of a perfectionist too. <laughs> especially since his Tennessee Vols won their bowl game in football. <laughs> he thinks he's Mr. Perfectionist. Sad to say Michigan lost. Uh, really happy Ohio, Ohio State lost. <laughs> if uh, Zach just texted me and said, I already texted her. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Go back to sleep, you... Yeah. Heathen. Um, 
But the but to think that God can take a people and use them together. That's what he's saying to us. He's saying, open your arms. Uh, Come out of your box. Come out of your closed-in place and open your arms and flow with others. And that's the, it's killing me to do it. It's killing me. Uh, God has just... uh, and it should be easy, I think, but I'm either really stubborn or really bad or something. I don't know what it is. But I know that that we're going to have to receive whomsoever comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. We are going to have to have love reign and grace abound and be able. Uh, that's what... Uh, Jesus said over Jerusalem, right? Isn't that what he said over Jerusalem? Um, That you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And we're going to have to do that. Now, people that I have dealt with all these years in the kingdom message more than any other message, maybe. I don't know if that's true. I think it's just human nature, but they all have their favorite minister. And usually it's because that minister ministers the way that they want to minister or that they have been around. They're either going to be somebody loud or it's going to be somebody quiet. It's either going to be somebody that... um, you know, is a showman and or it's going to be someone that's serious in the word. Uh, and everybody has their favorites in that. Some people just want to laugh when they come to church. They just want to have somebody tell them something funny and take the load off. And that's all right. Other people want it to be solemn and and serious and quiet. Uh, But we are going to have to learn to receive whosoever comes in the name of the Lord and receive them. And that's hard for me because I have always been, I've always had a protector spirit, a father spirit, I guess, where I want to protect all the kids and want to make sure that nothing comes our way that would harm anyone. And I'm still like that. I'm t- uh, that's why I'm still sh- chafing underneath this because uh, I still want to um, close out anything happening here that would cause you confusion or would cause you to say, uh, to hurt you in any way. I, I, I've always been a protector that way. Uh, we, we've always operated that way out of the house of the Lord so that we can make sure that the people of God are being fed uh, the purest uh, word that that we can deliver. And uh, and so in our in-gatherings even, uh, uh, we wanted to make sure that what uh, was presented was presented in the right way, and so we uh, only fellowship with those that we knew that we could put our confidence in. And God's dealing with me on this. Woo, is it ever a hard dealing uh, to be, because we started out in open pulpit. We started out in what we call open pulpit, where we would uh, have a worship and then we would all sit down and we would wait on the Lord and see how many, or how many, (laughs) that's what it turned into, uh, to see who God would speak to with the word. And that's a pure thing. It's a wonderful thing to be able to do that. But flesh is flesh. And in our when there was just a few like there is here, we can do that. 
But when you get up into uh, crowds of 40, 50, 60, or more, uh, you start leaving that pulpit unattended. And uh, flesh is going to take advantage every time. And uh, God worked it out, though, because even if they got up and got out of order, we were able to come up and and uh, straighten it all out and get it back into the path. Um, but Charlotte and I uh, at the barn, when we had services at the barn, I had warned them. I had threatened them. I did everything I could to say, we are going to have a quiet time right now. We're not wanting anybody to get up and say anything. We want to wait on the Lord. And I don't want any, because they were lining up at the pulpit. And I had them all sit down. And I said, now, don't want anybody rushing up here to say something. Just wait on the Lord. And, uh, and I mean it. I don't want anybody getting up here. And I said it set many times, not one. And when I turned around and started going toward my seat, I heard footsteps. <laughs> and that's flesh. That's how flesh does. And Charlotte and I made a... a, a um, promise that day that we were not going to let flesh just come in and 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 take up all the time and all these wonderful people's uh, efforts of getting to the meeting. You see, some people don't stay for the whole meeting. Some people only come for one service, and that's the only service they'll be in. And if that's a service where flesh is exercising itself, you know, we're going to get it straightened out. And then the rest of the services, God's going to take it over. But what about those that came only for that one service? That's a father's spirit. You want to make sure that everybody gets fed, that you're providing for them. Amen? So anyway, we started designating speakers and waiting on the Lord. Charlotte was designated as that because she was a real seer. And she knew the plan. She'd be able to see it working out. And now that's passed to me. And I didn't ever think I'd be able to flow in that, but I have been able to flow in that. But now in 2022, God recently started me wanting to make amends anywhere I could uh, to... Forgive and forget everything that has happened in the past and for us to be able to all flow together. Uh, God's wanting to bring this body together. There's no doubt about it. And it's vital that we come together. It's, it's, it's necessary. And we must do it. It's not... It's not a, well, Lord, wait until I can handle it. It's going to be done now before we're ready for it even. God's going to start bringing the people together. Uh, We've had, I don't know how many people pass through our doors and ministry pass through our doors. And something would happen and they'd get offended and they'd go off. God would bring other ministry in. And God would be moving in that for a while. And all of a sudden, something happened, they'd go off. And people, people coming through the doors of the in gatherings, uh, I don't know how many, uh, it, it'd have to be in the uh, a thousand or more people that have come through our doors throughout these years. And uh, be be a part of what God's doing. And then, for whatever reason, somebody offends them, somebody says something or does something that's out of our control, and they say, I'm leaving. I ain't going to be with this. I got my feelings hurt. I had this one brother, very sweet brother, although, you know, he had a hard edge to him, 
but uh, unless you crossed him, he was very, very uh, gentle and uh, loving. But once you crossed him, that was it. And so he, he came to our uh, meeting, and I don't know what in the world was going on with him. And he went storming up to me after that service, and he said, I will never, ever, ever, ever come back to these meetings, ever. I said, my goodness, brother, what's wrong? What happened? You didn't shake my hand. <laughs> we had 100 people in that little building. And I'm holding and hosting the conference. And there's probably 90% uh, of the people, not, not, I did shake hands, but I can't shake everybody's hand. And he held that against me, the fact that I didn't shake his hand. But for whatever reason, people come and people go. Now, our Easter meeting, I'm looking for God to bring in people we haven't seen in a while. And I'm looking for us to flow together. Yes. And we need prayer. We need prayer to be able to see God just flow uh, in the spirit. Now, all of us have a different way of seeing things. It just is. It, uh, some things have become very pronounced here lately, where there's an obvious difference in what we're saying. But... I have to believe that God can bring a word from those, uh, and I don't know everybody that's coming. I know some that are coming, others I don't know about, but I'm, I'm going to be making a call out uh, through a, 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 the Facebook and through a flyer that those that we haven't seen uh, in a long time, that we'd be able to see them come together and come to Tennessee and, and, and let's have a reunion of sorts where we can all be around each other because I believe it's very important for us to minister one to another right now and to be a part of each other right now so that, so that there's not any who in times past have got offended. If there's any way that I can take that offense off, I'm willing to do it. Uh, but mainly just to flow in with each other. But this has been chafing me because <laughs> it's my uh, nature to say, well, God bless you. There's the road. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't do what you wanted us to do. and We didn't say what you wanted us to say, but God bless you. I, uh, and uh, happy trails to you until we meet again. <laughs> what else can you do? What else can you do but leave them in the hands of God? Yes. And that's what I've tried to do. Now, at this time, is there going to be a coming together? And now we can't be doing happy trails. Now we've got to be doing uh, there's room at the house of the Lord. <laughs> For you. <laughs> and, and things like that to say, that's gone. That's over. That's healed. That's under the blood. Yes, it is. And I'm not digging it up. No. We're going to flow. Yes. And we're going to be together. And we're going to bless each other. Yes. And not curse. We're going to actually be what we say we are. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. something? Yeah. If we could be what we say we are, wouldn't that be something, dear ones? If everybody could actually be what you, what you think you are and your actions prove it, that you can walk in love, that you can walk in grace, that you can walk in peace, and that you can actually uh, center and focus on Jesus. And that's what I am going to have to insist on in these meetings, that 
we focus on Jesus. So that as long as you're talking about Jesus, I'm with you. 100%. Who wouldn't be? And as long as I'm talking about Jesus, who wouldn't be with that? So, so that's what I'm believing that God's going to start doing. Recenter us, recenter us into that which pertains to life yes. and to unity and to harmony. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, and I'm not looking for us all to agree on, on, on our doctrines or on our beliefs uh, or, or, or the things we preach on. Um, and I'm going to show grace absolutely on whatever anybody feels in the Lord, but I because I know that if anything's off, God can correct it in the meetings and go on with it. It yes. won't be any problem. And I want everyone to be free in that. Yes. But at the same time, I want us to recognize where our joining place is, where our source is. And that's Jesus, yeah. hallelujah. And if we're gathered unto Jesus, let the gathering be unto him, Amen. then we will uh, absolutely be able to bless the people of God. And that's the bottom line, is blessing the people of God. I, I, oh man, I don't want to return back to those old days when it was all a bloodbath up in the pulpit where everybody's slicing each other up with their sword, the word, the Bible, and they get up there and preach their, and, and, and absolutely it would just be a, a, until you see a head rolling down the aisle and you know who won. And that's what Charlotte and I uh, came into when we first came into the Word was that kind of a setting. And uh, uh, and we thought, you know, this is a wild kingdom. It's not just kingdom. <laughs> this is a wild kingdom. And um, I aim for something greater in 2023. I believe we learned a lot in 2022. Everything we go through, we learn from it. I learned a lot about myself, and I need to be better. I need to be more uh, Christ-like in every way. But that's what these things do. They show you where you're not fully uh, matured at. And, uh, and so I believe that if we can learn from these things in the past, we don't have to repeat them anymore. Uh, you know, he's raising us once up out of the grave, up out of our dead, deadness. And, and then we're walking in his life. And, and that's what I want this to be. You learn your lesson, and then you go f uh, f uh, forth from it and not repeating it over and over and over again. But true deliverance is here where we don't have to repeat it. We don't have to go through that again. God is going to keep us in the path that he is showing us to be. Uh, I'm going to read out of Jonathan Mitchell's. New Testament. I don't usually do that. I handle that on uh, uh, Friday nights in the reading room. Uh, but this is such a marvelous um, rendering that there are some key things um that we can uh, learn from this rendering. Turn with me to John 3.16. And um, we all know it by heart. Uh, I'm going to go back to 
to the 13th verse. And this says in Jonathan Mitchell's uh, New Testament rendering, Greek rendering, furthermore, no one has ascended or stepped up into the heaven or atmosphere except the one descending or stepping down from out of the midst of the atmosphere or heaven. We brought that out Friday, is that we, we are entering into the holiest of all, but we're not going to stay in the holiest of all, but we are going to uh, be equipped and then come out from that place and bless and reveal Christ to all the tabernacle and to all the people around the tabernacle. Um, in, in the Old Testament with Moses, uh, the glory was hidden behind the veil. Only one man could go back there was the high priest. But in this day, we are going to bring out from the holiest of all the glory. We're uh, stepping down from that exalted high place, and we're coming into the earth realm with the glory so that the earth is filled with the glory of the Lord. And that's the part I think that we missed a little bit is that we think we're going to stay in a secluded place of the holiest of all. But we're, we're receiving the glory, we're being changed by that glory for us to come out and bless humanity with it, bless flesh with it, change flesh until it's flesh no more. Hallelujah. Uh, a change the atmosphere until it's no longer a corruptible atmosphere. And that's, that, that is the part that Jesus uh, did, was that he, he, he uh, availed himself to his accusers, and he was beaten, and he was uh, 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 brought down and humiliated by men, by flesh, and went to a cross of shame and nailed to the cross and finally gave up the ghost. And before giving up the ghost, he cried out, it is finished. Now, once he did that, he gave up the ghost. The veil was rent in the temple and he, uh, his body was put in a tomb. His spirit went into the earth, under the earth, into Sheol, place of the dead, and delivered captives unto his captivity, brought them from the captivity of death into the captivity of his life. Hallelujah. But he had to go down in order to do that and then brought them up. If we're not willing to come down from our high place and minister to common man, if we stay in this exalted thing where we only fellowship and we only are friends with those who supposedly are in the same high place, then we're not doing anything. We're not fulfilling our purpose of being in the high place in the first uh, in the first place, <laughs> because we go in in order to come out with what God has given to us. It's not for us to gather together with those that are in there and become this uh, separate, uh, glorified sons of God. We come out from that, and we are able to give that which we have received. We freely received, so now we freely give that which God imparted into us. 
And and that's that's where I want to be is wherever God wants me to be. Yes. And I want to receive anybody God wants me to receive. Yes. Whether they're uh, uh, whatever denomination or no denomination or a heathen or whatever, let them come on in and let's bring to them and give to them what we have received from the high place. Amen. Hallelujah. So that it becomes, starts to transfigure a people. Hallelujah. But this is that's what this is talking to. No one has ascended into heaven except the one descending or stepping down from out of the midst of the atmosphere or heaven, the son of mankind. Now, it's wonderful in the word that, that Jesus identifies himself as both the son of God and the son of man. The son of mankind, the son of the human, humanity's son is what the Greek says, the son of man, the one continuously being constantly, or, or, or another rendering says, constantly existing within the midst of the heaven or the atmosphere. Remember what Jesus said is that he was in heaven while on earth. He dwelled in heaven, but he was not separated from the earth. He still chose these, these uh, corrupted men who had no idea what he was doing or, or what his message was. He chose them out from humanity. He chose these 12, each for their distinct purpose in him, and he revealed to them everything that he could, that they could receive. So the one continuously being within the midst of the heaven, and so just as Moses lifted up, elevated, raised up high the serpent, Within the wilderness, the desert, the desolate place, thus it is necessary and binding, necessary and binding for the son of mankind, humanity's son, to be lifted up, to be elevated, raised up high, exalted to the end. This is the reason for it, to the end that everyone everyone, the one habitually believing and trusting would continuously have Eonian life. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret about the scriptures. Eonian life. The scriptures have, uh, do not mention uh, eternal the word eternal of our English word comes from the word meaning an age, eonian, eon, age. And, and that's proven out through the scripture because Jesus himself, before we can actually come into our eternal place, in God, everything has to be finished in the earth and in the heavens. So Jesus conquers every enemy. Hell gives up her dead. The dead come before the great white throne. They are judged. Judgment doesn't mean condemned. Judgment means to come into a place where something's going to be discerned. A lack is going to be discerned. So they're judged with a lack within them. They have missed the mark. Then there's going to be the lake of fire. The devil and his angels are going to be cast into that lake of fire. Every other uh, man that was judged at the white throne 
and found lacking is going to be cast into the lake of fire. The only ones that are not going to be able to be cast into the lake of fire are those who are partaking of the first resurrection. Because those that partake of the first resurrection, the second death, which is the lake of fire, will have no power over them. All right? But everybody else goes into the lake of fire. And then he brings every enemy under his foot. Now, we're in Hebrews now. Revelation is not the end. Revelation is not the end. It's in the back of the book. And we know from reading our mystery books that everything has to be at the back of the book. And when it's at the back of the book, that's the end of the book. Story told. But this isn't a book like that. It isn't a novel. Men put revelation in the back. Amen. So it's not the end. It gives us a clue to what's going on now. Hallelujah. Inside of us. Don't you love the idea that God's going to take all of your enemies and cast them into a lake of fire within you? All those things that have tormented you your lifelong, uh, uh, all, all, all your life long, uh, those things that have caused you to doubt God and those things that have caused you to run away from uh, a God and that seek to destroy your soul, all of these things within us that have brought us into a divided state of duality where we are... Um, light and darkness, sweet and bitter, where we are uh, death and life, duality within us, constantly warring within us. This divided man, isn't it wonderful to know that within me, God is working in me to bring those lower elements of my nature and to burn up all of that corruptibleness within it? And to bring out of that lake of fire a new creature, a new element, a, a new faith, a new love, a new life, hallelujah, so that out of all of that processing, there is standing one whole new man, hallelujah. This isn't literal that we're talking about, a literal lake of fire. Don't believe those people that have drilled a hole down into the earth and they uh, put a pipe down there and, they're, and they say, oh, yeah, I, I put my ear to that pipe and I could hear the screaming of those that were in hell <laughs> down in the earth, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Revelation is a, operates out of an, an, an analogy, typography. Uh, it's, it's symbols, it's signs. It's for us to properly understand the whole plan of God and what the end result will be. But to get to the end, you have to go to 1 Corinthians 15, where it says, and then cometh the end. After God has put all uh, enemies under his feet, under the Son's feet, and the Son is ruling all this time, Jesus is the King of the kingdom. And he has been faithful. He says, Father, I have not lost one that you have given unto me. I have ruled in your name in all of the earth, and I have accomplished all that you set me out to be. And death is destroyed. And hell and the grave have been brought down to uh, to a uh, state of, uh, what's, how's the Greek say that? Uh, down to a state of 
being powerless, having no power at all. Almost had it. <laughs> Let me reach out there and grab it. Um, it it's, it's a vital word in order to understand it. Uh, but ineffective. It's, it's, uh, it, 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 it ha- it's irrelevant now. It's become irrelevant. And then cometh the end, where God will be all in all. Now, before that, Jesus offers up to the Father the kingdom. Otherwise, God cannot be all in all, right? So we're still in Eonian time. And he offers the kingdom back up unto the Father. And God now is all in all. Everywhere you look, you see God. You see the likeness of God, the image of God in everything, in everybody. Hallelujah. But that's how we understand the plan by looking at these different verses. We can see where, okay, that's why it's still Eonian. Because the son himself is going to relinquish his throne up unto the father. Where King James says, forever and ever, he will reign forever and ever, really means he will reign for an eon and eons. Eonian. And this is why he is descending to visit humanity with his glorified self. So that he can change this corruptible into incorruptibility and this mortal into immortality. Thanks. Thank you, Lord. Bless his holy name. And so just as Moses lifted up the serpent within the wilderness, thus it is necessary and binding for the son of mankind, humanity's son, to be lifted up, elevated, raised up, high, exalted, to the end that everyone, the one habitually believing and trusting, would continuously have Eonian life, life having the state of being qualities and characteristics, get this now, of the sphere pertaining to the age of the Messiah. Age, quality, and eon-lasting life within or in union with him. I wish, I wish every Christian would read the Greek. If all they know is King James All they're thinking about is out there somewhere, out there somewhere. And they have no understanding of the eons, the ages. That that one uh, uh, structure, their age, quality, and eon-lasting life. Hallelujah. Within or in union with him. With other manuscripts, Jonathan says, so that all while continuously trusting into him, may not lose or destroy themselves, but rather may habitually hold age-abiding life, Eonian life, that continues on through the ages. Because all of these ages, and I believe there's seven major ages, eons, that God is dealing with mankind in. But there are ages within ages. So one age, one major age, can have other periods of time within it 
that are smaller periods of time or eons that make up the age. And that's important for us to know. We go through many ages in our walk in God, many eons, many different days of the Lord or hours of the day, however you want to do that. And like 2023, I can tell already, it's going to be another uh, age for us. We're entering into another age. How long will that be in years? Who knows? But I honestly believe that it's a separating point now from the age that was and the age that is. And there's an age to come. Hallelujah. Amen? Everybody all right with that? Now, 316, for thus God loves the aggregate of humanity, the universe, the ordered arrangement. Now, this is what the Greek uh, renderings are. The organized system of life and society, the world, for God so loved the world. Well, the world is made up of these systems and arrangements that are all corruptible. They're all not perfect, not godlike. That's what the world is. For thus God loves the aggregate of humanity, the world, so that he gives his uniquely born, your King James says the so uh, that God gave his only begotten son so that he gives his uniquely born son or reading as an adverb it says here you see in this manner God loves the sum total of created beings as being the son in other words he doesn't just love his son because he's his son the son represents Humanity unto God, because he himself took on flesh, right? He became like us. Otherwise, he cannot deliver us from ourself. He, he, he became as we are, tempted in like manner. He took upon himself this lowly estate so that he can lift us up into Another state of being. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful love that we're seeing here. For you see, it is in this way that God loves the aggregate of humanity. Even as it were his son, he gives the uniquely born one. To the end that all or everyone the one habitually believing, putting confidence and trusting into him, would not lose or destroy himself or cause himself to fall into ruin, but rather can continuously have Ionian life. For God does not send forth, and this is 17, for God does not send forth his son as an emissary, or representative into the world to the end that he should continuously separate and make decisions about the world or, or would at some point sift and judge the system or the aggregate of humanity, but to the contrary, that the end that the world, or, or, or to the contrary, to the end that the world would be delivered through him. I love the fact that we can take a verse that everybody quotes off of their uh, frontal lobe <clears throat> that they can quote offhand. But when you read the Greek, it leaves no doubt what that verse is talking about. The total reinstatement and and, and recreation of humanity. It's all for humanity itself. To the end that God would 
have the world come to be like him. Hallelujah. So now we are the ones that are stepping down into death. We are the ones that are having to leave our safe place, our place of exaltation in God, and we are having to be identified with fallen man in the sense that we are visiting them with the visitation of Christ. And we can walk amongst them without being corrupted. Oh, hallelujah. How many has ever heard the fact that, you know, if you're an alcoholic, you can't go into a bar? Because, you know, temptation's there. And to a certain extent, that plays out. Anybody that's ever been an alcoholic knows that <laughs> you better have your uh, yourself totally uh, anchored in your sobriety before you go walking into a bar where others are partaking of the very thing that almost killed you. Yeah. Otherwise, you're playing the fool and you're tempting God by throwing yourself into that situation. But when you are fully uh, transfigured and transformed in Christ, when you have reached that point of saturation that we read Friday night and the, the, la the prior reading room where uh, this is permeating us and saturating us, meaning there's nothing else to be brought into it. it. Nothing else can be put into that garment because it has fully been saturated to the, to the point where nothing else can absorb into it. Incorruptibility. You are so in Christ and in Christed, anointed by, living in, lost in him, where he and you are one, hallelujah, he, you, and the Father are one, then, dear ones, you cannot be corrupted. Then, dear ones, we walk in darkness and we bring light into it. We don't bring darkness into us. We bring light into the darkness. Hallelujah. And, we're, and, and, and this is going to be a quicker work than I believe that we expect for Christ to start to deal with our nature and with our thoughts and with our desires and with those things that hold us back. That's what I mean. I'm chafing under this acceptance thing and this uh, uh, opening up my arms to everything that God brings uh, into our midst uh, because I, uh, um, I'm still in need of further change in me, further nature change. But I believe we're, we're, we're closer to that than we have ever dreamt of. Uh, that God is is really and truthfully getting ready to cleanse our minds, to cleanse our hearts, to bring our our spirit, soul, and body into alignment with God, so that we can be uh, able to give life unto anything and anybody so that we can be put into situations by God where that situation does not overcome us. We overcome the situation. Uh, thus far, we've been doing, like I said about addictions, is that you say avoid those places. Avoid going around those people. Avoid going into that area because you're not strong enough to resist it. And 
And, and that's the way we have pretty much been behaving with our sonship message is that we're set over here and the rest of creation, rest of Christ, uh, Christianity and the world are over there. But we are going to have to start opening up our arms and walking into the darkness and bring light into it. Hallelujah. And knowing that it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Knowing that the word is active within you. Knowing that you are able to come into the midst of, of need and of, of, of great uh, uh, uh let, let's say you come into the midst of something that is depressive, uh, 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 that is dark, uh, uh, that is suicidal, that is uh, at a point of breaking, and to know that you can come into the midst of that and lift that person up out of that darkness, hallelujah, because the light within you is greater than the darkness within them, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God, give us another mindset concerning yes. our ministries yes. of how, who and where we are going to minister because we are going to have to raise our eyes to, the, to another level in God where we can start seeing how great and mighty and powerful this life is within us. Hallelujah. And we don't have to be afraid of losing what we have obtained in God. Oh, glory, hallelujah. You can actually sit in the midst of flesh and not have flesh in, in, uh, uh, affect you, but rather speak into the flesh and cause the flesh to come into its right mind. Amen. Oh, Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. I, I felt to share this, uh, John 3, 16, because that's what love does. This is what love does. It's action. It doesn't stay just in one spot. It moves. Hallelujah. And it projects itself. And then it imparts itself. Oh, glory to God. How many want an impartation of love? I do. I do. Father, grant it. Lord, let your love be imparted uh, through us and, and, and out from us. We know that love is in us now, but project it out through our being so that it permeates us in every area with the light of it. Deal with us, deal with us in this day, Lord, as never before. Let the dealings of God be with us. Correct us. Instruct us. Bring us higher. Oh, glory to God. Amen. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, this is not kindergarten. It, it isn't, but, you know, I, I think of Sarah as she's here with us. And, uh, you know, Sarah hadn't been around us a, a whole long time, but uh, I see in her a depth that that God's wanting to, to draw out of her, a depth and an understanding of what God's wanting to do. This is all about what God wants to do in us. And, and everything I said is what God wants to do in Sarah. <laughs> it's everything. He's going to he, he's going to release her from all of her past, all of the things that from childhood, from childhood, Sarah, God is is separating you from your hurts and your wounds, everything that has shaped you. And I can say that to each and every one of us here, but I want you to know it that everything that has shaped you in your former, I'm going to say it like this, in your former life, and I'm not talking about reincarnation, in your former life, that God's going to deliver you from it and 
uh, it's not going to have a hold on you. Only the good, only those things that God did in the midst of you. And, and, and he certainly uh, gave you a, a, a wonderful personality and nature, and you're such a warm and loving woman. Uh, but there are things that you yourself know that God wants to deliver you from. And he's doing it. Praise the Lord. A new Sarah is right under the surface of raising up. A new Jane is right under the surface coming forth. All of us, right at the surface. Hallelujah. It's not way down. It's right at the surface. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, God, change our language. Yes. Change our words and expressions. Uh, sometimes I hear somebody say something, and uh, and I think, why did they say that? I mean, why? Why would you say that? It has no, no good in God, you know? But it's habit. People speak out of habit. And they, and they let words come out of their mouth because it's what they've always said. It's how they've always expressed themselves. And God's wanting to give us a new expression. God's wanting to give us a, a loving uh, language so that we guard our mouth. We don't let things come out unless they're full of life and glory and blessings and, and warmth and uh, peace and all of that. God, guard our mouth because uh, our words are powerful. So all of this, I believe, for me anyway, I, I should be saying for me, I don't want to be presumptuous and think that God's doing that for you also, but he's dealing with me on that with, with, with the fact that my whole man is going to have to come into another expression. Hallelujah. I have become more serious than I was prior. Uh, I, I just don't uh, joke around as much. But I guess because I'm really wanting business to be done, the Father's business yeah. to be done in my life. Yeah. And uh, in order to do that, sometimes you have to guard yourself. And 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 until until our expression comes in God, guard yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't I, I hope this has been a blessing. Praise the Lord. Anybody else have anything to say before we close? Praise the Lord. You have anything to cough? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been coughing. Y'all pray. Everybody pray for Bobby Jean, uh, and we will. We're going to stretch our hands toward her before we close because uh, she's she's really got congestion and coughing. I was amazed that she was able to sing this morning, but let's believe God for a total cleansing. Amen. Jesus, we're stretching our hands out toward Bobby Jean, Lord, and we're believing that you're going to clear her lungs from all congestion that, God, you're going to clear those sinuses, Lord, that, God, all of this that's up in her head, that's pressuring in her head, Lord, God, we're just asking you, let it be done in the name of Jesus. Let it be done even as we have spoken it. Be cleansed and be clear in your lungs and in your head. In the name of the Lord, we pray, and we thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing to be upon her. Hallelujah. Let her walk in that anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, everyone, we love you. We appreciate you. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I was going to open up and say uh, everybody that has... Uh, that is hung over <laughs> from last night. Hey, you know, I'm not really talking about alcohol. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about old people that think they're going to stay up until midnight. <laughs> and they give it their best shot. 
and some uh, s- silly old people like myself that actually made it. <laughs> and then in the morning, you say, oh, Lord, it's morning. <laughs> What's Bobby Jean doing in the shower at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> ah, it's 8, 8.30. <laughs> Oh my! But Happy New Year, and uh, hope hope it's uh, that that you can believe God yes. for the best. Yes. I'm not going to tell you and prophesy to you what uh, all God's going to do. Yes. He'll do it regardless of whether I speak it out or not. Yes, he is. Uh, but I'm expecting great things from God. Yes. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Um, be praying for us that we uh, will be able to continue in 2023 making an impact on people's lives that will continue to be a blessing. Thank you from the bottom of our heart to each and every one of you that have uh, sowed a, a seed of, of financial help into our ministry in 2022. Without you, we could not have done what we did in, in the past year. And uh, I'm believing that we're going to be able to do even more in 2023, as God leads and directs. Amen. But thank you so much to all of you. Uh, God bless. We love you. Uh, We'll see you Thursday night with Bobby Jean. God bless.